uh, about uh, so today workshop is about uh, youth engagement in socioeconomic changes and challenges okay. so basically today we schedule about our competition that many people registered and they send their videos and we'll announce the winner this competition was about to see the potential of project and uh, to send the updates and the and the uh, assignments of the project that what kind of project and which kind of project in coming up days CS and IIT is going to fund. So we got some videos and very soon after this viewing uh, we are going to show, announce the winner and also we are going to fund them the project. So later they can install the social development project and uh, hopefully we are going to do the agreement and MOU with this startup. So first of all, uh, let me start with slide of uh, what CRS is talking about and what is CRS. Basically CRS is, an, uh, is a research foundation and uh, it's an uh, institute which uh, mainly focusing on research on social development and uh, related with poverty and uh, our field of expertise is Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully, then in terms of days, uh, researchers and students and uh, experts and professors come to see us and uh, do part of this uh, new concept of research and social development that we can work together and to help people and to help the community of Africa to eliminate poverty. Thank you. So let me start with slides that what we plan today and uh, let me elaborate more about our ideologies and uh, our goals and targets. So our first slide is economic development. So we have you one knows what is social development. Social development is a development, a social and economic develop. Okay. So there are many examples of social development where we can work is unemployment, poverty, and many other stuff. So, inclusive of social development, development focuses, focuses on building resilience towards community participation. So, you know what is resilience. So, resilience is something, the meaning of resilience, that means coming more stronger from a disruption, coming more stronger than a crisis, coming more stronger than a problem. And uh, we, you want to also work on empowering locals in a community to increase their profit margin and standard of living. So how we can how we can raise their profit margin, how we can raise their standard of living by empowering them or create more awareness about their work, create more awareness about their resources, create more awareness about poverty, create more awareness about new change, create more awareness about a new life. And also we have to encourage self sufficiency and self reliance. So, I'll explain about the self sufficiency and self reliance in the next slide. 
Okay, so basically, social media challenges are the challenges in income, education, employment, community safety, and social support. So, how can we, as you, solve these problems or solve them? So, yeah, academics and research, we have to yeah, solve these problems, yeah. problems, we have to go for the research, then only we can analyze, then only we can find the problem. So, what is the problem? What is the root of the social media challenges and problems? Pasalnya <laughs> So why we are focusing on youth empowerment? Because our youth are more skilled, they are more active, and they are willpower. Because they are very energetic. So that's why we are focusing on youth empowerment. The more we can engage youth, the more we can empower youth. Maybe we can success, or maybe we can be, we can, we can get the goal of social uh, development in the respective villages or in the respective projects. Adolescent empowerment, let me tell about few uh, adolescent empowerment, yes. So, those who children or those people who are under 18, so we also call them as teenagers. So, if you can see, uh, for an example, India. In India, there is so much of poverty in villages or in the outskirts or in different places. So, many people, they marry in a very minor age or they lost, okay? So what we can do, uh, because Oxford is didn't allow them, okay? they don't allow to, in India it's illegal to get married under 18, it's a minor and it's a child. So when police arrested them, and when they send them to orphanage, so we try to give them empowerment because otherwise their life will be saved. So they have to suffer from depression or they are going to be suffering from this depression and anxiety. So what we can do, we are empowering them, we are solving projects for them so that they can engage in this project, they involve in this project, and they can earn money from this project. So what we do, we select a leader from them, then we do MOU, then we tie up with these adolescent groups and leaders, and for them, we install projects for them. So this is uh, one of our uh, field where we are working, adolescent environment. So in many countries like in India, Mauritania, Sudan, Bosnia, we work in these countries to empower the adolescents. Women empowerment projects. So of our IIT and CRs, we are running many women empowerment projects in many countries. So women empowerment projects is mainly empowering women, giving them empowerment. So how it can help them? How it can help in uh, social media development? Because now they are not dependent on their husbands. Now they are not dependent on anyone not dependent on any male figure. So also they are breaking this patriarchy, they are breaking stereotypes, they are more dependent, earning their own money, they are getting the liberty, more freedom, working hard, more strong ladies, so they are coming as a more strong lady, inspiring people, inspiring more women in the community. So some of the projects we are having a woman empowerment projects are handloom projects, water hygiene projects, different mm -hmm. other projects we are doing where women are getting empowerment. So these are the fields where CRs and IIT is working. So in coming up days, it's my request that you people also can be a part of this. Okay, do some DTR. DTR means detailed project report. Submit us some DTR. So hopefully we can fund your project. Then in coming up days, you could be a leader or founder of this startup. Okay. So we have uh, we have slides about our startup. What is that? That's social project. Later I'm going to elaborate really more about that. One of the biggest trends and warning for us is the migration. For example, you people belong from different villages, some migration, Tigal, right? Am I right? Yeah. I belong from India. I also belong from a village. I shifted to Delhi. I shifted to the capital because, because we see that there's no infrastructure in villages, no development in villages, no exposure, no jobs, nothing, right? Am I right? That's why we are migrating. So how it's affecting our village and our socioeconomic development, 
because we use we are migrate to some other places to get job but the main problem is we not able to see the potential of our soil the potential of our minimum resources the potential of our own asset so this is the problem these are the problems because of why we are migrating and migration is the biggest threat for the entire new community because once you migrate to somewhere to some city we are getting more dependent on our owners because we have to wait for the salary our lifestyle totally changed we have to work under someone you, you know it's somehow affecting our psychology also it's somehow affecting our lifestyle also somehow affecting our day to day activities also migration is one of the biggest uh, challenges in all third and by village society system family separate for this immense change in social fabric rural to urban migration leaves villages and suburbs unutilized so when we you know when we visit it or when we went to some other places to see dog then our own resources is stays unutilized so we don't know how to utilize them though they are very good asset for us so we need to know how to utilize our own assets self sufficiency okay so self sufficiency again let me tell you in a very let me brief it is that we are working on our own skills we are depending on our own skills we are working on uh, with our own minimal resources we are in our own village in our own hometown we are in our house working for ourselves depending on ourselves so this is self sufficiency you don't need to depend on anyone to see during covid corona right? many people they suffer so much who leaves or who uh, you know shifted to other cities so they the situation of so bad they traumatized and they try to go back to their own villages and in their respective uh, hometowns and villages then what we learn that again any crisis come like suppose we can take covid 19 so there is nothing you can do in cities there is nothing you can do in different cities you have to suffer because that this thing will you know if crisis come if pandemic come so there is no any job opportunity you have to go back to your village so what you will do in your village you definitely have to utilize all your minimum resources or water available there in abundance okay am i right so you have to go back to your village you have to work in there there is no any opportunity so that is why self sufficiency is important it is one of the biggest and uh, it's a very hidden need of this subject we must to know about self sufficiency and then many now universities are they teaching about the self sufficiency and why is it important we can create, we can create communities that are dedicated to the flow of self reliance utilization and management of natural and human resources holistically enables the community to be economically independent improve quality of life okay we are again coming on this slide you then for you possess the largest capacity to make an impact on the society that's why you department is important can be empower provide opportunity to utilize the skills to achieve self sufficiency yes because we the youth we know how to utilize the asset how to utilize that how to you know how to utilize the minimal resources to socially develop in order or to make it a product or stay it you know so as a youth we must to we must to work with our base skill to do some changes in our respective village or to create social development or to achieve self sufficiency which and promote community participation reduce migration and promote local development so as a youth it's our responsibility to create more awareness about the effects of migration we have to empower them in our own local places we have to empower them in our own resources we have to empower them in our own respective villages so then only we can achieve self sustainable development and self sufficiency in our villages so then you don't need to depend on anyone you don't you don't need to wait for a salary or you don't need to beg your salary for your job owners or from your chairmen or bosses or from anyone okay you are on your boss you you be you found out your own startup you are living in your own home town you no need to be scared of anything you no need to be afraid of anything why empowerment necessary to upgrade a community it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, it's a very basic question but it's very important okay 
to build leadership and improve lives of people to unleash the potential in poverty together towards a sustainable society and opportunities and problems i did i did identify the problems challenges in community and the solutions that can contribute to our holistic society development building community participation to solve the problems well this were the slides today that we have to share and uh, uh, we are glad the people who joined us so basically we invited you people for this workshop to brief you about what is iit what cr is working so if in coming up day if you have any plans to do start up or if you have any plans to install a social economic development project so kindly uh, send a mail to us give us the uh, write a dpr and uh, hopefully we can work together and uh, and uh, send us your uh, dpr details project report that we can solve some project mm -hmm. so basically this project will come under cr and uh, uh hopefully be a part of cr send us your mails and uh, definitely we are going to do mou and uh, work together thank you so much for joining and uh, moreover soon we will announce the names of the participants and the uh, names of the winner thank you for joining thank you so much my pleasure so if anyone have any questions regarding the project and uh, if you have any queries that how you can be a part of cr so if you have any uh, queries then you can send them message here all right then they don't have any message to go you can end the and this one you can end it it's almost complete no 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 don't end this not over the meeting is not over okay. can we meet this one yeah Yes, I want to give a plus for our brother Ali. He is the one who attended the most of our events. So we need to share that. Okay, he is one of our champions. So we give a plus for everybody. And you have attended also. He has been so many. What's your name, sir? Ahmed. But this is one of you. Show your video on the phone. No, I just. Why are you not having that? Show us. Anyway, uh, show them your video. Show your video on the computer. Your video benefit one and also. No hurry up. Uh, one can have it. Yeah. Okay, first of all, let me show you guys.
what is Assam and how Assam looks. So you can get the ideas that why we are focusing on Assam and why we are working in Assam. So you, you can get the idea, okay? Okay, guys, you can tell me in the chat box if you can see. I just showed that video with earphone because there's no good here because of the uh, size. So I can scroll in here. That's one of the projects of IIT. How far we can go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
be in my part of the slide time and stuff. Okay, thanks again for coming. Apologize for uh, waiting late. Uh, and apologize that I think uh, Paul is supposed to have at least one and a half hour for his presentation. But maybe he's going to have it. He's thinking that his flight is going to go now. So anyway, uh, the purpose of this uh, workshop is to get you engaged with your community. I think some of you have attended like uh, Ali and uh, Ahmed, and some of you also, I think you have attended before, right? Uh, know that uh, the purpose of Kiyas, one of the main purposes of Kiyas is to get people engaged with the community. So our academic program, our workshop, all what we do here is trying to bring people in that they start to do projects, whether this project through us or through other partners uh, that they, they are working on the field. And, uh, so I think a part of the presentation to show you what is the youth engagement mean. And I hope that Paul, he managed to tell you what is his uh, type of engagement for this community and uh, how much he got uh, inspired by this experiment. Now he's been working on that, I think in the last, uh, what, three years, four years? Since we started, so this is his fourth year. Uh, when we met Paul, his, his age was uh, 18 years old. Right? Am I right? Yes. Yeah. 17. 17. Yeah. Okay, now he graduated and now he's working in his own business because of our team board. So we encourage all of you to really submit if you have a project idea, to submit that, including uh, you guys from uh, Kenya today or we have some people from India. Yeah, yeah okay. like a lot. Yeah, okay. we are like 10. Awesome. So we encourage you, all of you that to you really uh, see the, the, the most important thing about this experience is that you are not only changing your community and knowing your life, you know, life purpose for them, but even you are now in your team. Okay, so the core we've seen here now, which is the like the North Country is different than the core we've seen in Bahrain in 2020. Maybe raise the voice back. Okay, yeah. so in Bahrain 2020, there was, uh, uh, you know, I remember at the beginning of uh, Corona. Uh, February, before shutdown, exactly one week before shutdown, we had a big conference. And Paul was, was one of the main speakers in the conference about his experience and so on. The same, the one he's telling you here, but now he's got he developed to a business uh, to be more of a, you know, uh, uh, social entrepreneurship business. And, and we've seen many like Paul. I mean, we have hundreds of stories like Paul. Some of them, they come back and they visit. Some of them, they become selfish and they don't come back and, you know, they become like business on your end. But the, the, I've been saying always to people, the more you engage with your community, the more you're gonna do this, the proper change. Okay, I think everyone can sit, I'll come to you. Perfect. Okay, so uh, this is why we said the purpose to, to present us and use uh, Paul's uh, visit, so that he gives you some of his life experience. About this experience, I'm not sure if he presented to you, or maybe I'll engage him more. Uh, remove this chair for the this experience, I don't know whether it is, uh, uh, you've seen it as challenges, and sometimes people who are enthusiastic, they don't show the challenges, okay? When in reality, they always show you success, okay? But the reality is that uh, this experience always will be lots of challenges. What is the best for you is the challenges, not the, what is the chances you have. The challenges will bring for you more chances, hidden chances, okay? There are clear chances. For example, we know that, for example, in this road, nobody, nobody is doing bakery, bakery. Okay, so this road means bakery, for example, right? 
this is a clear opportunity. Everyone who goes through this world of living with God, they know that. But the chance is, what type of bakery is needed more? Or what type of uh, business that I can develop in my bakery? It will not come unless you have some type of challenges and so on. Okay. Or we study the challenges of the community. And this is what we are saying uh, why we say that this course is very important for you. And uh, I'm not sure if there is uh, the videos uh, that you had uh, managed to put it there. Yes. Okay. Did you show them? You did not show them yet. So we'll show the videos of some of the participants who will try to show some of the challenges. So I'm talking about his story, uh, learning and reflection from Paul for put his story, story and case study, capacity to be resilient. What I've seen in this guy now, and then he's resilient. And so by the way, if you can survive fatigue, you'll be more resilient, for sure. Okay? So uh, this is something very important for you, is to become resilient through the challenges that you are facing. And for that, we'll talk about the mechanisms of your socioeconomic engagement, how we can become more social economy in this case. If you notice in his story, I'm uh, putting for you some of the pictures that he's showing. Okay. If you notice that he felt he went through the community. And maybe you notice some of the pictures I take him from his presentation now. But I because I know the whole story and we present it in a detailed way. And we have it by the way a written case study which we share it with you. Good when you read it. I mean, if you, if you can write about your the guitar experience, because I've been saying to each other to write about the guitar experience. Because the more you see, if you don't publish your story, or you don't publish it, write it down, reflect on it, you don't know where you have reached. Okay? So for that, it's very important that you publish whatever you have done before. In the beginning, before this, this picture, he won't fail to the community. And he tried to convince, because he's not from this community, he's from other communities. He tried to convince the community people, okay, that which is near nearby community, because the area, from his day, the uh, that, uh, that you need such type of policy, okay? Because you are now having problems with your houses. You know, they have the elephants. I'm not sure if you told you, the elephants, they come and destroy yearly their houses. They, they, they have the floods. You know, whole Assam, maybe you told me about Assam. The city like Bangladesh, every year they have floods. So many of their houses are destroyed. So they rebuild their houses. They have lots of uh, people that are dropout. Then they don't finish school, okay? And this is one of the highest places in India where they don't go to university, okay? Or you have migrate to work labor in, in big cities, okay? And uh, Paul, you can comment on that. And don't be busy you now with the Ali. Comment if there, I missed something. So all of this needs an uh, uh, man because, you know, you are outside there. How come you go to academia and work on it? Okay, so it took some time to make people, uh, you know, uh, serious about this project and so on. And then when became, they became serious, they started to do, they collected the, all the village, uh, you know, York, with the little leaders, and you know, in a certain uh, communities, I'm sure even in, in uh, your communities here, and you know, it's a different religion, the tradition of Muslims. Okay, you have to take the blessing of the village leaders, or the elder people, and so on. And this is what he did. He brought the elder people to the, you know, to the place where they are starting their project, where they will put their hearts, or you know the, what they did, you know, he showed you the hut they did for which is like a the manufacturing plant, the small manufacturing plant. Okay. And from there they started. Okay. So see, first uh, uh, first of all, that he was very curious after he started to know understand, and this is what we say, what happened to the mindset. Okay, what we say, Ali in a mindset is made from four things. Okay, he said assumptions, okay, what we assume of life. So mindset is like, you know, the glass you see the world. If you see me now, besides I am fat, what are you seeing at, at me? Okay, this is it's a mindset. Okay? So everybody will see someone different in mindset. Okay? Number one is the assumption. Number two is the attitude. Number two is the attitude. And number three is the behavior. And number four is the way we reflect or react to life. And everyone can shake up his, uh, his uh, mind. But uh, if we continue to do routine life, we go to school, we finish in from school, go to university, or we go to work, and so on, and we don't go through challenges, our mind what will happen to us. Will it change? No, it will be stuck, right? And this is what is, uh, happened to me. Because I started to get many challenges, at age 45, I started to change. And for that, I believe 
And then I, I just the message I want to give to the whole world. And then you can change your mindset. You can do something different. You can influence the world. You can make something that's extraordinary that nobody is doing. Okay. This happens only through engagement. Okay. Now these days even I feel that I'm not engaged because I'm busy with academic things and so on. But for sure, one of the purposes that we are going academic, now not to be busy with academic uh, only uh, work, but to use it for getting engaged with the community. Okay. And this is the, our main purpose uh, for that. So uh, if you start to have the first visual, because your mindset, when you start to shake up, it will create curiosity one, curiosity two, curiosity three. You'll be more curious. Okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? It's every day, you, this guy, you write to, to me, especially in the beginning. What can I do now? What I do? Okay, because he knows something. Okay, I don't give him the idea because he's in the field. Okay, we say always the expert, the guy in the field, not the expert who's sitting and knowing from his knowledge. So you'll be the expert more than anybody else in your problem. But it will help you to visualize what you want to do. What, how much you want this community to be a uh, success story. And this is what he written about when he seen that visualization became true last year. Then he, uh, we, we talk about observing, observing. You start to observe in a different way. Then we start to absorb. Okay? You know, you observe, but you, if you don't absorb, you will not have the mindset again change. And then he started to apply. And he, then he started to analyze and evaluate, which is the case study, like he written and so on. And he's writing now his second case study. He wants to write a book now. And he came only this week and he didn't go outside, huh? Like other people go to the gorilla, they'll go to see the museum. Like he sits here just to get focused and to get, you know, the, the energy that he do, you know, he reflect on his experience and to see how he can contribute more to the next stage. And then he can, you know, when you create something, you can reflect on it better. So the reflection can be in the beginning and can be also in the end. So this is something that is, I think is very important that I, I'm not sure, uh, Harold, you can show them the slide, yeah, even when I'm talking. It's good, they, they, they try to see the slide. You can see them the slide later. Okay. Maybe you can turn this a little bit up. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, and for that, I say here, at this stage, you have to put the intention. What do you want to do in, your, in this community? Or what do you want to leave as a legacy? Okay, very important, the intention. Okay, are you really just uh, playing with your time and are you playing with the community or really you, are, you want to do something for the community? Are you trying to be, uh, get to just uh, be recognized from people or you are trying to, uh, you know, get uh, really the community uh, more uh, hard? So again, for that, I think it should tell you about that problem for us and, and uh, here. Social economic problem solving for us is all about opportunity. Okay, the problem is for you opportunity. The problem does not mean bad. Problem sometimes is God given so that you discover more. But you have to work very hard for it. It's not uh, easy. Uh, it's not uh, easy going thing. Okay, you have to work very hard for it. And you'll see that in his story, starting from here, that he was available from the first time with his community. His availability was high. Okay, as a person, he became engaged, he lived in that village. Okay, he lived like them, he started to work with them. Okay, he felt that, uh, you know, their feeling and so on, which is the, the dropout students. These are all dropouts. Okay, but he felt that he can build inside them something new, a passion. At that time, even they didn't have the skill. Am I right, Paul? He, we, we brought some people so that they can help them to build the skill, which is what? About the bamboo. What is he found? There is a community. There is poverty, dropout, village un unstable, unstable. They are always uh, leaving their village and uh, they are migrating towards a table. So they are not getting even enough money. Okay. At the same time, they are set up and they can be molded to be a craftsman. So <coughs> he started the field work, the other uh, natural stuff. It's called what? It was what? It was a VTA. Huh? No. If you don't know, then you have to repeat oh, it. Right. Right. What is the available result in, in uh, Assam? Bamboo. Bamboo. Okay. So the bamboo is uh, a lot in that, that area. So they are near the river and so on. So for that, I always say, once you get engaged, you have to disrupt the community. No. 
What is the committee now? And if we talk about all our some families, they used to encourage their uh, children to go and migrate, to work as labor, so that they can send them that small money. And instead of having the, the children or young to stay where in the area, use the natural resources of the area, and they become more productive. So this is one of the uh, maybe reflection on this story. I'm trying to help you actually a little bit exercise. So try to write these notes. From now on, this will be like the law, the content of your exercise. Okay. We can improve also uh, as yours upon existing social economic solutions. You see, what is the solution to the solution? Those migrating, the family, they get uh, ready for the, you know, uh, for the elephant, they put guards, right? When you go there, you remember what? They put guards. And they put people that is large and because they are at night, elephants might come or early morning, they come and destroy their village. Okay. But this was not the only solution. They wanted more unity of the community. So they started a common voice. Every family was involved. Now the bamboo, what is the bamboo? I'm not sure if you go into this detail. But the bamboo approach with this. Sorry, let me return. So the bamboo brought with it, okay? The bamboo is this, is this, this way, this one? Yes. So the bamboo uh, brought with it, right? Brought with it the, uh, that the village became, the village became a, a place where, uh, what is it, uh, tourists will come, okay? So he can maybe he showed you the picture, okay? Uh, because we are near the river, the river there is nice and so on. He came the village to be because of the bamboo, because of the village, village uh, involvement of the of the houses, you know, the, the household people. It became a eco village. So during Corona, even though you know most in India nobody was traveling, this village used to start to get people because people wanted to go out at least somewhere where it's not so much crowd. Okay. So see, some opportunity brings for you another opportunity always. I help you to see things in different ways. So also, uh, you, uh, from one of the things when you get engaged, you identify successful business models. Now, which business model is easy? Okay, not easily copied. We took something that now is like a brand. Maybe we not showed you. You can bring it. The one you brought. <coughs> this now is very popular in India and this brand. Okay. He, he makes he makes other things, but he might mostly he makes the same the same money. Most people they are buying from how many how many people sold from that? Two thousand two thousand already sold with good prices. So, and people are reason the people are waiting for this order. Okay, very simple product. But to why he started with this branding first. He was building this brand with this type of uh, of a product. So he identified his business model. So this is this is one of the you know, this is like an uh, ancient Indian uh, palace. Okay? And they are putting this, many people are ordering this. It's very simple, huh? Okay. But it is a brand, you see it in uh, many uh, companies are ordering. And he got also the water bottle from a uh, game of bamboo. Of course, inside the room, uh, you can see this. But this is an example of product. Maybe I'm not sure if you are seeing it, guys. So this is like he started to do the same product. In the beginning, okay. So why? Because you want to raise the uh, craftsmen uh, caliber. When they do many products, they have not uh, build that caliber very quickly. But when they start to do different, uh, similar products in the beginning, uh, with the same same brand, so now they are very popular. Uh, what's the name of the footage? Reverse footage. Huh? Reverse footage. Uh, reverse footage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Weaver. You know weaver. Weaver. We can tell some weaver. Now, he started to bring other products with it. With it. And in this project, you will find it, I, maybe you've seen in this picture, he put with it the silk. Because silk in Assam is very, very popular. You know, they have some, what is popular about? Tea, silk, uh, bamboo, okay, and the nature and the beauty, right? These are uh, four main four main. Did I forget anything else? What? Okay. So, uh, he identified the business model and he started to sell his product. And then it increased your capacity to introduce innovative products. Now they are thinking about different things. I've been telling me yesterday that they are thinking about many different products that they want to produce and so on. 
Okay. And remember, see, the more people they get engaged with their community, they start, start, start to see the other resources. What, re what type of resources that we have? Forget about money. What type of resources we have? All of us. And I'm telling you, if someone, if someone has money, he can't see this resources. He always thinks he can buy things with money. But what type of resources we have? In your village, what you have? What resources you have? Natural resources. Natural resources, right? And I'm, I bet it is much better than Bahrain or the Gulf, right? Yes. Much yes. less chance, okay? And sometimes he goes, he gets homesick, he wants to go there, okay? Then the nature, nature, he lives in nature. He likes nature, no? Sitting in a cement like uh, place, he just sits there, okay? So, uh, natural resources, what else we have, Khadija? Physical resources, okay? We have also the human capital resources. Right? Okay, sometimes now what he used now? He used the natural resources, which is what? Bamboo. Bamboo. Okay. And the and the fed. Okay. And then he used the uh, human capital, which is unemployed uh, and uh, dropout job, right? And he used the physical resources, which is uh, also very important. Okay, and then what I Dr. Dunia is saying, which is very important, is the social assets. What is the social asset? He brought the community together because now it is a community uh, driven uh, because they want their children not to migrate, they want to make profit because they started also to start to get what? Tourism to the community. It became uh, like it became now uh, very popular in Assam. And you know, he's been in TV, you saw that with your TV and reviews and so on. So it uh, became very popular. Obviously, they have reviews and so on because they want to. Uh, Assam is very rich uh, land, but you know people are driven always to capital cities, Bombay, and uh, uh, and uh, Delhi, and so. so what he did actually, he used even the capital resources, as I said, the human capital resources, to see the end solution. What are the opportunities other than the bamboo? How we can mix the bamboo or the silk? Okay, and he started to put it in a packaging, and he said, you know, you buy bamboo, for example, like this, but we put for you a small silk. Right? He brought something for Khadija, for uh, uh, Dunya, for uh, the, the guys also. And then he, uh, this, he, he used the intrinsic opportunity to entice the community in order to bring better political outcome and they raise, you know, both the financial, the tip, and, and they actually he moved outside the village, but still they are uh, working with the village, right? Am I right? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so this is again something that's very important that we, we think about. Try to show them this again. Uh, so why we need to be getting get engaged also? To focus on the specific under, underserved community. What is the underserved community or in case of this case study? Both the dropout yours and the village. The village is not stable. They have challenges. Okay, they used to only have fishing. Barely they have fishing. They sell most of the fish. Even this is one of the projects that we discussed we do. Okay, because mostly they sell, they live by day by day. And I'm sure there is in the one that I Many community like this, they live day by day. They can't, they can't see tomorrow. They can see only today how they survive. Okay. And then also he started to inspire a narrow target audience of the community, which is the village. Okay, the village, the, the parents of these uh, dropouts, they live very close to them. Am I right? Huh? He's going to their houses, living like their lives, and so on. Okay, so that he starts to get the feeling of that. And then he started to. Uh, produce uh, something that is help the community, which is the local, local uh, for that he said, uh, compared to the product size, he said it's a very competitive price, and for that, he's ma uh, uh, making now a new uh, movement for another product. So, we can, what we can learn from our story is that he reacted, he realized what is the problem. He started to resolve the problem. In the beginning, he used to be maybe dependent on me or something, some idea. Then he starts to be independent. And then he starts to reshape his business. And he became more resilient. Which I, what we've seen, Mr. Rodinian, for not seen for a long time. Because every day he's just sitting in the WhatsApp. I, I know him. Yeah, I know how much he is. So. But Mr. Rodinian, for a long time, he did not communicate with him. He's seen major changes in his identity, his way of thinking, what he wants to do. And uh, actually, yesterday, I didn't mention that presentation. But yesterday, even in his presentation to us here, about the art and so on, was very impressive. Okay. 
to, uh, he started to be proactive, uh, preparing himself always, uh, started to be problem solver, and he went to publish. And before, like I'm doing when I was eight, I'm pushing to the question. Still, he published his first case study. Uh, he didn't, uh, it was registered then. Oh no, later, very difficult. Then, uh, here I saw work and he talked and so on. Now he's encouraged to do a book, not only a paper. Why is he doing a paper? So, this is something that is uh, normal when we see it in, in, in yoga that they call it under the floor like, like this. So, engagement with the community will help you to know what to bring as five features to your product and to the community. The more you get engaged, uh, we know from the story now is that he can, you know, if people, if uh, with this brand and with this type of business, he can open now new business. Once you go into business and you know that the community is your strength, you can open new business in different ways. So uh, the more you observe your community problem, the more you pay attention to the type of problem and you work on it, and if you start preparing to so bring solution, the more you, you bring really, you raise your capacity to manage risk. So you like to go into risk. And what's happening to most of us, I know Ali is a teacher. If, going, if you are going to a job and all of you are known, at the end of the month, you're going to repeat this, this thing, you are not a teacher. Even though your job may be risky, even if you are in a healthcare or even if you are working with electricity or something, you might I mean, get, get killed anytime. Okay? But you are not a teacher. Risk taker means that you go to a new business every time, helping other people so that you can help them to bring in new projects and so on. I believe that to become loyal leaders like these ones, and I'm sure that these not, not only for all these this things is, uh, are becoming your leaders, am I right? Okay. Uh, they are, uh, because they are engaged now with uh, bringing new venture, they are building their personal interest, they know self-value, life purposefulness, they are creating now for them uh, really uh, a, a lifetime story. And then, Yeah. yeah, attitude number two, number one, assumptions, assumptions. assume, yeah. yes, okay. because when you, when you assume something, it's like paradigm, assume means, oh, so we see that something will happen to us if we do so, 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 this will be news to it from the world since we are young, so we make judgment always like this, okay, so it will affect our attitude, and usually our attitude control our behavior, and our behavior control our reactions, okay, so, if you want to be moving from this problem, you have to move from, from uh, this type to, to this type by pain. And this pain, either it is gained by choice, like he did, he had the choice. He took us to Assam, he wanted to convince us, he saw us in, in different areas in uh, India, and he convinced us, uh, me and Dr. Gunia, to come to Assam to just start this project, and then we go through a pain. When you work with us, it's not an easy job. Why? Because we don't give uh, enough money. We tell you work hard for it so that you can create the change, so that you can see the power within you. Okay? Not, uh, you know, from, uh, from other people outside. We are not in you. We are trying to help people to change. If you notice, the, 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 this is the scan of the brain. I'm not sure. Uh, just change it there. And let it sit there. If you notice here, this is a scan of the brain. See the pain areas? If you notice here, the down ones, they are the same one as the here, right? This is the person with the pain, the same person, when he was given something about his parents or his children and how much he reacted to that. <coughs> if you notice, the pain area is similar to the empathy areas, okay? So if you want to be an empathetic person, you are really want to be something that you can see others that cannot see. Empathy people, they can see certain things before others. Okay, always I give example. If my father wanted the water, I would give him this water before he asked. This is called empathy. Okay, or my child, or something like this, right? <clears throat> Someone I love. So this is very important that we, we think <clears throat> that this will come only from engagement. The more you engagement and you go to empathy, the more you'll see the untapped opportunities. Okay, and he didn't come here and pay all this stuff, the, the ticket and so on, just for uh, by consequence. Okay, he liked me, he's like my son but also he came to improve himself and to see the opportunities. So my exercise for you, the fact now, 
in uh, working and engaging in community development, okay, engaging means trying to do the change, you are leading the change in your community, it will bring for you lots of opportunities. And these opportunities cannot be discovered unless we start to uh, see the facts in different ways and try to see the combine the community issue. What Paul story is in, in a short, it is a community issue. Okay, so have a community issue. Okay, it's a community issue. What is the community issue for uh, for uh, Siva Sagar or for uh, for uh, Darker? What's the name of the village? Dean Corker. Dean, Dean Corker. What's uh, the problem issue? The problem is uh, income, education, employment. Uh, also let me say uh, in summary: unstable community, uh, youth migrate, uh, youth dropouts. Like in summary, okay. So this community issue. And then he started to link it to what are the community wide resources. Okay. From this, he brought his product. So the product you are seeing now, which is the Weaver's Cottage, okay, is, is what the combination, the product of the community issue and the natural resources and the human capital and the physical resources. And the time. The time also is a resource. The time he's given, okay, day and night. Sacrificing his time, any other people, maybe other graduates, they were going to work with other uh, uh, communities. Okay, I think it's fine. Okay, but uh, maybe uh, he know he or I mean he going to work with with a companies or something stable job, but for him no, he chosen to be, uh, you know, uh, with that community so that he specialized on them, and now he becomes social entrepreneur, well known in India for his. Uh, uh, is the project that he changed a village. See, he changed only a village, but now he knows that he can change the world. Okay, the way that he talked to us yesterday, I'm not sure I did not attend his lecture today, but I'm sure it is uh, inspiring also. The way I mean, Paul, I told him yesterday, I was telling him that I know Paul now in four stages. And it's very important for you, Khadija, because you have the two views. Okay, I know I've seen Paul. The time he did for us uh, the, uh, the forum in uh, Goa. Okay, he was given responsibility from other people, and they thrown all the responsibility on him. So his uh, friends, who were supposed to be the organizer for us, they thrown everything and they gone away. He became responsible for that. But this shop, he used it for an opportunity. What is the opportunity? And you've seen Paul to, yes, at that time. I can tell you, and you like you not believe me. He said, "Don't believe me." That one, I don't have. I couldn't say two words in the front of the audience. Okay, so, a power was worse than that. He couldn't say even one word in front. Of, he will talk. He will work very hard, but he don't want to talk. Okay. Then, uh, at the second stage, we've seen Paul when he started to take his project at this community. Uh, no, sorry, he taken us to Assam. The third stage when he started this project. The fourth stage when he did when he did the uh, his case study. The first stage when he did the uh, entrepreneurship program. And now today I can see another one. So see, this is in short, short years. This is, a, by the way, a lifetime story. It's happened only in three to four years. So you can imagine how much uh, uh, you can do in, in your, in your uh, lifetime if you think like this way and you work very hard on this. So what I want from you, uh, I think in a group of two, I shall return from you in this. Okay, take a community issue, well, as I said here, okay, and uh, take the type of resources. What type of resources you said? Can you write it down? I'll repeat it again. Dr. Dunia said about what? Social, social resources. resources, social assets. Means what? <coughs> uh, how, come, uh, how we can use the community network, right? Or the village network, or the family's network in a certain way, okay? Or maybe uh, like a a group network, maybe an unemployed youth or someone or, or children, whatever, or friends, whatever. Okay. So socialist. Then he we spoke about physical 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 resources, which means what? Capacity. People okay. willing to learn, willing to put their hands, willing to give you time. Then we talked about human capital human resources, capital resources okay, which is very important because they are the most costly sometimes, especially in craft work and or any other way. Okay, it doesn't have to be a similar project, by the way. And then, natural resources. Natural resources. Okay. 
we can, we can use this relevant to a community and we turn the, the problem to be what what we said opportunity yes okay so let's take this now in uh, just uh, uh, 10 minutes get me a, a story same for you guys so again uh, how do i bring this again here <clears throat> so I, what i want from you as exercise guys watching us what is the community issue that you want to take and then focus on these four resources that we've spoken about the physical resources the human capital resources the social resources <coughs> and the physical resources okay physical natural social human capital if you have a question you can ask me no, 10 minutes They have question yeah. you prepare your videos. Huh? Your videos, yes. even the big one, the participants. You can come and please.
They are working, they are working in the hospital. No questions. Huh? No questions. They are just. Oh. They are going to participate? Yes. Yeah. 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 Huh? yeah, they are. Okay, one minute more. Uh, yes. Can people come again? Yes. They are registered. Okay. Okay, we're ready, guys? Yes? Okay, we're ready. My name. My name is... My name is... My name is... Which from my name is... Which from my name is... Okay, guys, shall we? Okay, now, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, well, shall we start with Mohammed? Yes. You are ready? Yes, okay, go ahead. Uh, Herwa, please bring it there to them. Yeah. Remove this, uh, I think, or uh, fix it. Okay, go ahead, brother. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Mohammed Adelmano. Uh, and by the way, this is my second time to attend this workshop. Uh, I was here on 7th day of July mm. this year. And uh, the reason why I come again is because for my first time, I learned a lot of things. Yeah. Your uh, English is good, by the way. Thank you. Compared to Isa or to Ramanda. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, you're not speaking uh, English. You know, <laughs> English, English, French, and English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, I was born in Western province uh, of Rwanda and raised there uh, in a small village there. The name? Uh, it is called uh, Shira. Shira. Yes. And uh, it is um, a small village. And, you know, in Rwanda, uh, since 1990s uh, up to uh, 2000, uh, there was wars in Uganda. Mm. Uh, there was a uh, liberation war. Uh, there was a genocide against the Tutsi, 1994. Uh, and after that, 1997, there was another war between the soldiers who are in the former government and the one we have now. Uh, but uh, the war started maybe in 1990s uh, up to thousands. In that time, there was no scoring. Yeah. No, no schooling, no, no studying. School, no yeah. School, yeah. Yeah. This caused a problem of so many people who are not attending school mm -hmm. in a period of more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. Then after that, there were many people who can't read, who can't maybe communicate, who can not uh, even write. Mm. Then what I can call as an opportunity mm. is that so many people need to know how to write, need to know how to read. And it should be better when uh, scheduled a plan for them to start learning how to write, to read, even though they are adults. So today there are uh, people uh, that did not go to schooling, or this is the old generation? No, even now. Ah, so even there are now. not enough schooling yet? Yes, yet. yeah, yeah, sure. It's okay. And I think many dropouts maybe, right? Yeah, of course. So they have the one, the majority dropouts. We don't yeah, have yeah. 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 So, um, so this I, is a community issue. This is a community Especially issue. in the Eastern world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what is the, uh, what is all the resources that you 
that they have there? Um, the human capital? Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what is the human capital for your story? Uh, I think uh, we can use like skills because me as the one who is saying this, uh, I'm the graduate. Yes. Uh, but You're a graduate teacher? Like you, you no, no, in political science. Political science, yes. yes. Okay. Administrative okay. science, yes. Okay. Then uh, I don't know how I can uh, resolve this problem, mm. but I think when some scores are beat mm. for those generation mm. and starts uh, encouraging them to join them, maybe can resolve this problem. Okay. Uh, so you know that uh, this is the community issue. Yeah. But first of all, you, did, you know that you are one of the human capital that can be used for that issue. Yeah. But what? Uh, let us help you now, and then we will sit down with you. We okay. will not go without we agreeing on something. Okay. Yeah. Either we take a project or we study the project, okay? Uh, and we, I want to work with you, okay, okay. on that issue. Yeah, thank you. Okay, but and remember, we're not in you, we're private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need something like Paul's project. Yeah. Social for profit. Yeah. Which means that you make profit, you live on it. Yeah. At the same time, also you return our money and maybe make a, even profit for us. I'm sorry. Not necessarily big profit, but at least, or you open with it another project. Yeah. And you are not profit oriented. Yeah. But we want to show people, and uh, it, sh it shouldn't be one way. Yeah. And for that, I changed change our uh, initiative mm -hmm. from working with the Negatari as a NGO yeah. to working you now as a private entity and social for profit only. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank Very you. good. But uh, let us help you. Dr. Adoni, what do you think there, there are other resources? You heard the story, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a story. Uh, Eastern Provost, uh, because they had the war in 1997, there is still a, a problem that uh, uh, people, they don't go to school, okay? Uh, so this is the problem. The natural resource that we know, for example, people like Muhammad, maybe he create a team, okay? And they're like a small company that they will be uh, doing a project with these people. How they, uh, what are the other uh, assets or resources, physical, Human capital, other human capital, natural resources. For example, mm -hmm. what thing that we were talking about today, and that we yeah. would want to main things that you have here, that people are uh, they are faithful, they believe in religion, either Christian or Muslim. But you have, and and this is an asset that lots of the world are missing this. So, for example, normally we say even previously, or oh, not all of our education comes from school. Lots of education comes from the religion, uh, religious institutions, uh, church, mosque, uh, temple, and different countries can be different uh, places. But this is a really asset that lots of the world nowadays they are not utilizing that. While if we go back to the history, they were like the main hub of education and how they were using. So one of the resources is to cooperate with these uh, religious institutions because they have the power, they have the network, they can help in uh, teaching, they can have lots of resources as well. You don't want to make it a religistic thing if there is a conflict or there's more than one. I don't know exactly the village, but if it's all mostly uh, one or two religion and they don't have this religion conflict, it's something you can build in it. I mean- Use as a resource. You use as a resource, yes. One social profit. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm talking about the social profit, but I can, I'm saying that he can utilize this in building the social profit. Now, the first thing when you want to do a social profit, you need to know all your assets there. You know what are the what do you call it as the problem that you are going to turn into opportunities and what are all the resources you have you have natural resources you have these yours okay if they are not going to education that means they are having lots of time so look at it in the other way that you are having plenty of time you are having the youth who have the time you are having something that they are believe they believe in if it's the religious stuff I don't know because I don't know the area. Yeah, correct. It doesn't mean what I'm saying it's correct, but I'm telling you some of it. Then maybe you have these, uh, some of the elders who have some wisdom, and then you know the need. 
of this uh, village. If it's, for example, if it's education, you can do something that one of the people who are educating start to give uh, teaching others, doing something. So here where you need to think or we need to know more about your village. Okay. Anybody want to uh, any, uh, contribute to that? Or, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? That is the main problem your community is facing. But uh, I would like also, you need to make a research on it. Like, as you know, we, uh, the way you have said that you have been experiencing this effect of genocide. But right now, we don't have those people who are still affecting about those, uh, those parts of the genocide. The only people that is, that have been facing that 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 effect was their mother, if I if I can say that way. Their mother have faced that being in genocide or being the orphan, but their children. You need to know why are these children not going to school. Is it because they are, their mother are still having that memory of genocide, or is it because they are having a problem of a, like? Uh, uh, getting the school fields. Yeah, we need to know about that. Like you need to make a good research about it so that we know where can where are, where are we going, how are we going to solve the problem? Yeah. Okay, okay, I think I think it's adding for us that the mother can play also part of the human capital. Yes. If it is the problem. If it is a source of problem or a source of uh, let's say uh, support. Okay. So that's, uh, I'm trying to show you here a case study for uh, one of our projects in Ghana, where uh, this guy, I hope you can see it here. Okay, well, this guy is uh, started social for profit for uh, solving his community health problem, Ahmed. Okay. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, he's not, uh, uh, the religion, again, this committee same as you, and they are from different religions and so on. Okay. Anyway, I, it is here somewhere. I, I, need, I need to show it later, but maybe you uh, can get it. Okay. So the, uh, his uh, service for his community is the following. Okay. Uh, number one is that he start, uh, he's a nurse. So he's a nurse, okay, and he's not even a uh, doctor, okay, and he collected different uh, uh, people who have this basic uh, nursing and medical skills, okay, this in the beginning. So this is the human capital. What is the community issue? The community issue it is in uh, uh, northern of Ghana, and it is a village that is uh, very far from any hospital or any medical center. So many people are dying because of hygiene, okay? okay. Or maybe sometime the bite of insects, like, uh, or even animals like snakes and so on, okay? So this is again emergency, okay? Or many uh, people are losing their children. Uh, I mean, the, the mother, when she tries to deliver, she, uh, her, her uh, child died, okay? Because either of poor, poor hygiene or poor, you know, health healthcare before and so on. So he given total service for these issues. And he asked the community, and this is something good, I think uh, yesterday we were celebrating that, no? In uh, Rwanda, which is giving, right? Showing yeah. the, the giving or whatever. Yeah. He asked the community, and they, part, they give him 5% only, okay? Of their, uh, whatever left, you know, whatever, uh, uh, you know, they, he can, they can get from, from their products as a participation. So if the, if the income is low, he will be having a low income. But he gives them round the year services relevant to this uh, area, okay? Nobody think that this way you will make a money, right? But you can see when you go to his medical center, I try to show you later. Okay, it's, a, it's easier my laptop. 
uh, that he brought uh, uh, ambulance, uh, you know, about bikes, bike ambulance, very well, very well designed bike ambulance. Uh, he uh, started to have big medical center. He started to collaborate with different hospitals. He paid the hospitals for the doctors and so on. So even though sometimes you don't see the see this, uh, this is what he said. He started with this only a small opportunity, but all the community became a member. It's like insurance, yeah. Okay, type of insurance. And all the community, uh, you know, are committed for the continuous of this project. He said sometimes he had a problem, and uh, because he had some financial problem, they supported him. They collected money to support him. So this is the way where well, that is. Yeah, this guy, if you talk, see him when he's talking, I try to get you his uh, video, inshallah, before he show you his videos. Uh, how much he's passionate about what he's doing. This is a true leader that is changing the world, even though he's working in a small village. Because the whole village respects him. The whole village knows in how many uh, children he has saved life. And how many people he has also, you know, helped to uh, improve their quality of life. Because, you know, poor hygiene and so on. Like same thing with when, when people they can't read and write. It's like you normally, know, like, and even though they are humans, but uh, frankly, they're really like animals. But they can't communicate with people properly. See, people succeed or thrive or die even if they are living in life, if they don't have two things. They have, no, if they don't have uh, communication and they don't have a better way to live a quality life, right? Communication is very important. And the most important tool in education is what? Communication. It is the tool for communicating with others. Okay. So I think what is your project is very potential, but you have to think this way, even though we'll participate maybe with you in the beginning, but it's not for charity. Or making uh, making you to start a business cycle of profit, inshallah. Okay. But you have to think about this, the you know the, the natural resources and the social assets like Dunya was saying as well. These are all available. So you know even a social asset is stronger than whatever product. The product is the physical asset, right? Or the natural asset they're gonna give them. Okay. But see the the support of the community itself is. Uh, and now he trained many people, volunteers. Which is they, if you can't reach sometimes because you have too much demand, you have about 12 uh, motorcycles. You see it later and down. But he said too much demand on him. So then he trained people also to how much, and he do always training for. So you also part of your work, you know, you bring people who support you, which is volunteer. Social profit, by the way, is a connection between NGO and profit. Entrepreneur. This is what the social profit is about. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, let's take maybe, uh, do we have the guys there? And uh, uh, Herwa, do we have the guys there and uh, here at the Zoom? Uh, they have a, a project they want to talk about? Yeah, they type, so. Can you ask? Or we take it here? Brother, if anyone can uh, talk, maybe you can raise your hand or something. Possible. Okay, then you can uh, tell me later. Okay. Then let's take another project. Uh, 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 yes. So we have. I'm still uh, saying, uh, calling you Juman. Huh? I, 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 I either you change your name or you change my mindset. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. So, most of you have chosen poverty as a key issue. Okay. So, most of you in Africa, you found some families that spent even a day in poverty. Still, some of them put on the table to eat. So, poverty is mostly community issue in Rwanda, okay. especially in our sector world. Okay. So poverty as community we have just used for depths of resources or for kinds of resources to also or to come with the solution to this community issue. Mm -hmm. Now, what type of poverty? poverty? Poverty is very big uh, subject. Absolute poverty. Huh? Absolute, Absolute poverty. poverty. Yes. Okay. As you said, that people Cannot have I managed to put two meals on their yes. table. Okay. So, okay, absolute poverty. In where? It have to be again. In where? In which area? Near Niboy sector. Niboy. Yes. Here in this village. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't imagine that we have uh, Niboy uh, people uh, absolute poverty, but maybe in the front of us, maybe. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, for okay. natural resources, you have land. Okay. And by the way, here I have to stop. And Khadija, it will be a shame on you and us. 
we don't do what we use, always tell the university me and Dr. Adonia. When we go to universities, what we, what we say, Dr. Adonia? Can you take her, uh, her what? Just a minute. We always say that we can't solve the problem and write research in other areas. The neighborhood of the university, we are not solving the problem. So if we are talking about the poverty and other areas of Rwanda, and we are not talking, not tackling the social economic issue of the neighborhood of the university, which is the closest, that's when we are not doing the proper things. We are doing the research, but we are not doing any applied things for the area. <clears throat> okay. Well, I have one question. Can I ask you Yes, but did you get the point first before he asked? Yes. yes. And then we go to many universities and we tell them, you can't talk about social, uh, social economy, social work, social science, if you did not tackle, uh, start taking politics from this area. Yes. So my question is that uh, we should start projects from Niboye and then we shall spun from Niboye to other places of Rwanda. That's what you want to convey. Yes, yeah, and we started other places, but we should have something for this neighborhood okay. according to the social economic problem in this neighborhood. Okay. Because I'm sure the even the type of poverty is talking in this neighborhood, it's totally different than what is it and okay. the other areas. Okay. But we should be a model of Yes, um, starting from within. Then only we can set example for the other communities exactly. and entities. Yes. Start from within. Always they say start from within. Okay. So that's uh, something. Uh, okay. Continue, Ali. The Polish resources are plain. So there is sm small plots that people they can use to grow vegetables for the family feeding. Okay. So it may be good uh, resources to use. So natural resources is land. Yeah. Okay. okay. Also, mm -hmm. we can use those natural resources to integrate small project so that they can develop a family from that. Okay. From that. okay. So for hum human capital resources, we have skills. They can apply their skills to integrate those natural resources to change or to apply those skills to make any project that can be used to overcome the poverty. For example, they can use the stones. They can use the story in the as natural resources by applying their skills. Okay. We have also physical resources. Mm -hmm. Physical resources, we have uh, physical facilitation. How the people they are physically strong, the resources like uh, infrastructure, like uh, school, house, building, they can use it in tackling the problem of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we have uh, social asset, how the community can collaborate, how the people they can gather together to solve the problem. Okay, the collaboration with the people is most important to develop themselves. As it, for example, as a youth, we have very strong, we can share the ideas so that you can make or can apply something great to develop as family. You are from Nepal? Yeah, I live at, uh, in the Katenga. Think. Yeah. It's closer to the boy. Any 15 minutes walking? No, 10. 10 minutes. Yes. Oh, good. Hi. Very good. Anyway, uh, uh, first of all, and is thank you very much, uh, Ali, for uh, telling this one, for for telling us about uh, this neighborhood, and it's something that is very important for us. And what you said is very important. You mentioned about the social collaboration, which is of course we could go without saying you have to have a collaboration and so on. But the most important thing you said about the nature. I don't know why you chose in uh, agriculture. Okay, because I don't think in the area here will be competent for agriculture unless you think so. Okay, but uh, the area maybe because it doesn't have lots of water, river like this. But the area uh, is very valuable, and it has having many movements. Many buildings are coming uh, either nearby, and here it can go for Redstone in ten minutes. You can sell many things that is relevant to. Uh, bringing from the land some other businesses. And this is why we need to investigate. Your project now, in order to be social for profit, it have to use the land at capital C. Some of, some of the assets will be very large. For example, you said about social assets. Okay, this is good. You said about the skills, this is very important. But their skills is not wow, well, okay? And it's okay, right? Uh, their strength doesn't, we don't want people to work hard. Work smart sometimes, okay? 
But what is the value? The value is the natural resource. What is the natural resource? The availability of no boy in the middle of Cape Valley. You can reach the airport in 10 minutes. You can. How can I use that? What type of products is needed for these tourist areas or areas where there are lots of students, for example? This is something that we need to think about. Right? So this is where we, again, uh, very good, chosen how much you are engaged with your community. Like, uh, can we take you, Herwa, and uh, yeah. brother, or name? No, maybe before you can go, we take one. one, we take one, one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Dr. Robert, his hand is up. Maybe oh, ask okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, can you can ask to me what he's asking? Or can talk, can we hear them? Yeah, he can talk. Do you want to talk or write? Yeah, his hand is up, so we'll see. Okay, go ahead. Robert. Robert. Yeah, so their responses are hello. Yes, yes Robert. Yes. We can hear you. Yes, hello? go ahead. Hello? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I I need to also. I'm one of. I'm one of the refugee in Uganda. Okay, so we are talking now from uh, from uh, Uganda. Uh, who? In Uganda, yes, I'm a refugee okay. in Uganda. Living in Rhino okay. Camp, yes. Okay. So um, we we have a project which is uh, to empower women in in the community on microfinance and livelihood programs to tackle hunger. So okay. this has been one of uh, this has been one of the challenges that we have. Can I repeat your identified project? In... Your guys, they listen to you. Your your project. You are focusing yes. on the women. To empower the women, yes, uh, by by financing the them, women. yes, financing and uh, and tackling hunger. Okay, financing them food. to tackle hunger. Yes. So yes. they uh, yes. work, for example, in food-related yes. products. Am I right? Yes, food-related okay. program and also the yes. So this has been one of the the the, the projects that we are trying to work with the women. And they use their local resources and uh, to bring uh, those other women who are also marginalized in the community who could not even afford to also get access to some resources because they are women in the community. They right. are resources. Yes. So they could not even know that there are some local resources that can be used. So we empower them to identify some of their local resources. And uh, now the issue here is the microfinance issue becomes the challenge on how they can save their little resources. So little resources have been misused, thinking that they need bigger resources. And yet the little resources, if it is managed well, it can also increase uh, their productivity. So as a refugee, we, we, we have identified some of this gap which is existing. So we are trying to improve this, this challenge in the community by bringing them up. Like, okay, I repeat for you what he's saying, did you hear? I repeat what he's saying, I just am... a minute ago. He's saying that they are financing women, okay? They are financing women, and they're financing them especially for the food-related products in order to tackle hunger, okay? Uh, but uh, they notice and they have still problem and even though there's many people, and this happened to us, my brother, Robert, happened to us him. Yes. Many people think and we are not giving enough money, or even though we are not financing, we are trying to do community change so that we can you know, study about what type of best changes. This one type mm -hmm. of group of women, they need more money. They believe that the money is given is not enough. Second type is that they, they are misusing the money, okay? Which is again happened to us in all the, our projects. So what's your question, Robert? My, my question is, uh, uh, what can we do different that can uh, foster change to the community okay. that That's we are currently question. working with? OK, mm -hmm. I, I got your question. Yes. It's a clear question. And this is one of yes. the things we are trying to improve over time. OK, 
Yeah, you don't get lucky to have many poor. And we, we had uh, more than 100 person like poor, which is a, so, a story in Assam and so on. In different areas, especially here in this in African continent. Okay, but we didn't have honest people like poor to come back to tell about it. Even they didn't give us their story. They took them the money. Maybe they became successful. I was saying, uh, hinting about that in the beginning, but they never came back to us to even to, to share their stories and so on. What we did now, in the last three years, and we are trying to improve now through social for a profit, and we do a strong follow-up, okay? No payment will be given unless we see the outcome of uh, the previous payment, okay? And uh, this is what even Paul yesterday was talking about in his uh, workshop to us, and the importance of the follow-up. Okay, Paul happened to be, and he's interested, so he follow up with me, more than I follow up with him. But I know that people who used to follow up with them just vir virtually, it's not enough. You have to have a physical follow-up. And uh, the person, you see, poverty uh, is not uh, less a problem than uh, uh, even uh, people with wealth. But poverty, the problem with poverty in the people, the psychologically, they are used to think of uh, shortcuts. They think in whatever they get money, this is, uh, you know, it's a, uh, they can become, uh, Let's say uh, they can run away with it or they can abuse it or something like this. Not because of them, not because people are bad. Nobody is bad, by the way. The environment makes people bad, okay? And we should have support to help them. And our way is uh, the way, our way, improving our way is the only solution, not to improving them. Improving our way of following up them because we want to help them to first think about their wealth, not about their poverty. And this is something, I'll just give you an example of one of the studies that has been done. Uh, I was telling them, and we use it a lot, uh, that uh, poor people we were given envelopes in the beginning to collect money, okay? Because, you know, poor people, most of the people, they live for the day. They, they never collect even a penny in their uh, accounts, okay? So when the crisis happened, then I'll admit some people are waiting. So. When crisis happened, they don't have any money even, okay? And for that, they fell all in crisis and problem. Then they were given after a few months, another envelope with their children uh, photos. So the envelope was printed with their children photos. And the second time they started to collect the mo most of their income, okay? So see, sometimes there are ways, just changing the way itself. The envelope was given, which is, was a very good tool, but it was not given with their photo of, a photo of their children. See how much change we, is happening. I think Dr. Aduni want to say something. Okay. So this is one of our, my best way, if can, I can tell you. There are many ways. And you remember what the formula I used it here, I'm not sure if you have seen. I say always, reability is the probability of availability. It means if you want to be reliable in your business, in your approach, in solving the problem, you have to be always available, okay? The, the, the thing about uh, Paul's story, he was available for that problem. He lived that problem. He started to be very passionate about his problem. And actually, people follow him now in Assam, tell him we want to do the same project in, in our area. Okay? And this is what uh, you better stay with a limited number of women and you make from them success story and you follow them strongly better than you expand. Uh, we are very proud of of one of, of our stories, which is maybe even stronger than Paul's story, is an impact, I mean, real impact, is that we eliminated the poverty, absolute poverty in a, in a certain village in Mauritania, okay? But now, because the follow-up is coming back and not done like before, they are now becoming weaker, weaker, weaker. So even you can reach to a certain stage, it will drop once the follow-up is, is less. Okay, I yeah, okay. Let's start time one thing. It's about always what the community teach me, total people involvement. Within this woman community, although you are the leader, make sure that you let one of these women also to be the team leader of this project. So then she will be also responsible for this follow-up. She will be like, as we say, in your hands that will help you. And then they are going to feel more responsible. She will do also the more nitty gritty follow ups. Okay. Um, uh, okay, uh, Robert, did we answer you? 
Yes, so yes, you have answered me. Yes, yes, you have answered. So that is really you see this guy? I was talking about this guy of the of the ambulance here, right? I'm not sure if you heard me. Uh, which was in uh, we did it in Ghana. Okay, this guy that uh, yes. turned about him, he's doing follow up. For that, the community is more committed to him because he does the follow up always. Okay, and even he said some community members they tried not to pay. Okay, to get the service without paying. But the pressure of the other community members made it, made them pay. Okay. And the second thing we say always, anything you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So you need to have within this follow up a measurement of this uh, follow up. Yes, this has improved, this has changed. Because what make these women or people in poverty is they can't measure the things, so they don't know how to do things. Otherwise, they would have been an entrepreneurs and they would have gone by themselves and done you know, um, being successful in their life. So you need within your follow-ups to have some measurements, numbers, so you can show them where is the improvement, where uh, is the decrease, where do you want to reach? So they know these measurements by themselves. This should be one yeah. of the main tools. And this is what That's they can help you. Yeah. Even in Mauritania's example, Dr. Mohammed, you was saying that we worked with a woman, they were fully, uh, they didn't know anything. But the basic things we taught them was the mathematic things, the very basic mathematics I'm taking. So they have to do these uh, measurements. Okay. Open this, uh, okay. So uh, thank you, Robert. What I can, we can help you just to conclude here, and we can help you to send you the forms that you can use. It's in English. And of course, you can use, or you can see also our books. We can give you electronically, which you can read. And they, they are all, all about tools and how to use the such forms to the benefit of the uh, of the of following up the community and ensuring that your volunteers they do the same work. Because you can't go just ask people uh, what you have done, what they like this. You know, uh, ask them like you are investigating about them. No, you ask them as if you are a partner and you are trying to help them. This part of the the attitude, the approach that we use is very important. Okay, let's hear the last team. Yeah. Can we hear you? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Judge Mohammed. And I'm very happy to be here. I'm a director of Nasenge Jean Claude, who is not attending this physical class because of personal reason. Uh, our community issues I have found in my village uh, is uh, undeveloped farming. Mm -hmm. uh, in our village, there is a we have a physical physical resources such as infrastructures which can help us to transport our product, our productivity to, to the market, and we have natural resources uh, and those people can get uh, to improve their productivity. Which community? Community. Where uh, is it? Here. Uh, uh, Kigali. No, no, province. Northern province. What? Northern district. No. What's called? Northern district. Oh, Northern district. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, yes. We have a land which which is a natural resources, yeah. and we have infrastructure such as roads which can help us to transport our productivity to the market. But if you see the productivity compared with the capacity and effort of the people to the to cultivate, you see mm -hmm. there is not equal. Uh, people cultivate and they, they make a low productivity to the market. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my project or my advice I can I want it to develop is like training those people and improve the, the rate of productivity. So I don't know if they use it, they don't know how to use the, the fertilizers to improve their productivity. But if you see uh, the we have a large land, but if you see the productivity from the productivities from those land is smaller compared to the land. So we have those uh, natural resources, physical resources, capacities, the people, but the productivity still is, is at a low rate. Mm. So I have to train those people to improve. And to which see. products, uh, general products, or any, any, what type of products you believe that you should focus on to improve the productivity and improve people's life? Yeah, uh, my product is, a, is a sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes? Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, thank you very much again. I'm not sure you are aware about Tayyip project. Uh, 
anyway, we'll link you a Thai project, okay? I want to start from there. And we are interested, by the way, yeah. in whatever I say. So what he's saying again, and uh, now he has that, he has the human capital, but the human capital, what's the problem? Okay, first of all, what's the problem of Musanzi? What is the issue of Musanzi? It is fertile. This is an issue. If something is, is not well utilized, it is an issue, especially if there is what? Poverty, right? And Musanzi is a, not only a tourist area, it is very fertile, isn't it? Yes. And uh, because of their weather, the weather always cold, okay. even their product type is different than the products you can get from any other region. Okay? So you'll get uh, products uh, different type, like for example, the sweet potato and so on. Okay? So the fertility of the land is not addressing the, what this nation, not addressing the poverty. Why they have poverty, even though they are very fertile and so on. So he's saying, one of the problems is that the people have no skills of in, or dealing with, or not updated, let's say, they are using only traditional methods. Yeah. Yes. They are not using, you know, fertilizers or other techniques. Okay. You have finished uh, from university or studying? Studying what? Uh, chemistry. Chemistry. So we have guys, uh, which maybe you'll meet, uh, already they started projects in Mosanzi about the uh, Irish education. Okay, actually this is our leading project. Okay, and we are capitalizing on this project to spread other projects, maybe in, even in Mosanzi. I wanted to clip with this guy, just tie it, and at least I will give you his number and contact and so on. Because for sure, whatever you say, all the same is what, uh, what uh, Tayyip said, right? He said about the low productivity, the land is good, but people are not trained, people are, are getting a type of, uh, you know, malnutrition, right? Yes. Because they are not eating well, okay? Yes. And, and why we focus on the Irish potato? Because it will address this issue, okay? Yes. So that's, uh, that's uh, something. Okay, guys, I think I'll give uh, now a chance uh, for Paul to give you the feedback about the videos. That uh, participate, uh, people participated in. I will try to show them the video while Paul is there. Yeah. Go ahead. Show the videos directly. Yeah. Go ahead. We'll take the participant videos, then we'll show you. Yeah. First of all, thank you everyone for joining with us and uh, to the participants who joined this uh, competition and who send their videos and audio. Uh, let me show you. My name is Mr. Pacific. I'm one of the members of this group, which is under the facilitation of PC. Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, talk about the social economic challenges facing the youth and uh, the solutions that you can get in order to address those problems. So the challenge uh, I've seen, all the challenges that uh, I have uh, analyzed, it is youth unemployment, whereby the youth unemployment by February 2023, this year, it is about 20.4%. Which is not uh, good. Let's first say if an employment problem continues to occur, what it, what impact it can uh, have to our society? Firstly, there can be increase of uh, poverty, increase of poverty, which can even damage our society at uh, a big level. The second it is the risk. Occupation. You know, when a person has no occupation, has nothing to, that is going to occupy him, he is going to think a lot of things. Or when he or she doesn't have income to support his activities, he's going to start thinking uh, in one way or the other. And even when you see people who are working, he try to uh, to, 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 to blame him or herself uh, in a way that it is going to cause him many problems. Uh, thirdly, it 
increases the crime rate. You see, when you have no job, Satan is going to give you a job to do. For real, Satan gets people who uh, uh, have, have no occupation, have no, no, nothing to do. So, when you are unemployed, unemployed, you have no, nothing that is going to occupy you throughout the day or throughout the, 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 whole, like, the whole period. So, it's something critical that people as or youth as can, the employment can affect to us. Uh, increase in government expenditure or government spending. You see, when people are not working for the money, the government is going now to fund them in their living. And this, this one, you see, it is going to make the government, you see, the government is like a parent. When it says that these people are not related income, they'll see how those people are going to live. So after seeing those effects, main causes, what causes employment? See, when you see what, what causes employment already. Uh, I'm going to suggest the major thing that is causing unemployment and the solution that you can take. Uh, something that causes an, an employment is the updated education system, which prepares young people basically for white color jobs. You see. People are now uh, studying. You see, the education in the past, for education in the past, people who study when they have, let's say, like nine percent of the of the of the belief that they're going to get a job. But for now, people are studying even knowing that they're not going to get a job. This is due to scarce of soft and uh, practical skills. You see, they discuss of uh, soft and practical skills. There are soft skills and practical skills. But the soft skills, these are skills that are going to help you grab or grab an opportunity. Let's say communication skills, networking skills, and also leadership skills. That are things that are going to help you grab opportunities. Well, as this, uh, Grab opportunities and they don't even have uh, an even rule in people in that uh, section we want to be employed in. The second of the practical skills is the skills that are required at the labor market. Statistics <coughs> show that uh, people who graduate from the universities or people who are graduating from uh, secondary schools. They have probably less practical skills. Whereby, if you try to talk or to discuss with a person who is in the who is having a, a let's say a job, it tells you that I'm um, telling you the the real fact that what you're studying here at the university or what you are studying at school is totally different from what you need at the job market. And that makes me to wonder uh, the importance of education. But education is very useful. It's very useful when we have uh, procedures or the strategies that we can match them to the labor market. Uh, there's a solution that you can take for this problem. There is a project that I've put in place in order to uh, Face the solutions to this challenge is to organize seminars and events which are periodic, whereby the professionals, let's say the organizations and even companies, meet the youth in order to connect them or to build a bridge between education. And the labor market. Let's say uh, it is not to be placed in universities, no, it is to be placed in the society. Let's say they organize uh, an event at a certain venue in the city where every, each and every youth can gather. 
where the professionals, even successful people in business, meet with the young people, such that they, they are certain the youth can be empowered. The youth can be empowered in such way that after that those seminars, the youth get uh, more uh, such that after the, those seminars, youth can get more conclusions and uh, and uh, decisions to change their uh, to change their uh, personal living. With the youth, our law now it will be to be present in those events and take decisions because we can't wait for the opportunities to come and approach us, but we are the ones to uh, chase or to stand out and knock on the doors of opportunities. Thank you very much for your consideration. <clears throat> Can I go to the second one? Mem volume. Not more than this. How long is this video? It's up three minutes. Can I skip this one? No, just uh, listen. Did you hear it? Uh, no, I'm just here from the TV only. Okay, you can skip it. And then we receive some audio messages instead of videos. So okay. can I, can we play, play the audios? Let me play the audios, okay? Yes. Hello, my name is Nyoma Benjamin Jacob. I am a sub Sudanese refuge in Uganda. I am a co-founder, the operation and the progress manager for Android Social Enterprise Organization in the Rhino Camp Refugee Settlement. The following are the socioeconomic challenges facing my community. One is food insecurity, two is poverty. The solution I have looked at here is business skilling to the refugees through Basso and liquid soap, making that can quickly raise for them money to improve their living standard by buying food and also buying other necessities which are essential for living. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very short and uh, uh, What he said, what, 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 to what? To say like our big soaps, how they solve the social economic reality. Giving soap or creating soap? Yeah. They create soap. Soap, yeah. soap manufacturer. Yeah. Can I play the second one? Yes. Hi, hello. I'm uh, Carlo, uh, the current Daffy education chairperson. I am glad to receive the link and uh, uh, actually one of the socioeconomic uh, uh, issues that we face at the Davi University students, uh, that is the uh, when uh, students in Kenya are uh, actually uh, financed. Uh, uh, however, I, I have just received the link lately, but I also wish to uh, check our issues to the office as a matter of concern. Uh, uh, thank you, and uh, I wish to maybe uh, uh, regard this opportunity uh, where we can. Present 
It's the last one. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Karina Bernardo. I am the founder of Community Home Foundation, a community-based organization found in Kenya. Uh, talking of social economic challenges, among many of its challenges, I will mention is uh, climate change. This is a great concern, uh, especially from the area I am, Takuma refugee camp in the northern Kenya. Uh, these places are prone to intense drought. Uh, climate change in this place poses a fundamental threat to people's livelihoods and uh, crop growth and water supplies. And I think the major solution is to put across advanced policies to fight climate change and eradicate it. For example, engaging with uh, businesses to reduce carbon emissions and combating deforestation while fathering, while encouraging uh, planting of trees among many others. Uh, thank you. Okay, so let me just comment on this one before I call the, give us the concluding video. This video, this video. Uh, what do you think of the the videos uh, of the first guy? At least it was clear. Okay, which is uh, Pacific. He attended our workshop before. Do you not understand? And uh, compared to the other videos, okay, Pacific he presented what a solution. Yes, but is this a foreseeable solution? Solution. <coughs> When you do events like this one now, yes. or we gather, let's say, hundreds of you, or we bring inspiring people to do like this and we go and we lead them, what will happen? Most of the people, you might get, you are very inspiring, you might get one or two, right? But this one or two, only they know this, the idea. They can't uh, be like Paul. Paul is not an idea guy. Paul has a uh, now. The expertise to do something from nothing. Okay? And this is what we say in your role. So the specific idea is very good. And maybe we have, even we can sponsor that idea. Okay, we'll discuss with the uh, uh, DJ and Rosa Cartunia, which is very good. We can do it maybe quarterly or something like this. We'll gather all yours and we can make a big uh, story about it. We put it in the news and so on. But this is only enthusiasm. Always we say, Enthusiasm is not enough. Knowledge is not enough. Enthusiasm is not enough. Only learning by doing is enough. So if you want to change, you have to do a project. If you want to create a change, you have to do a project. You cannot tell people, go for education, why you're not studying Ahmed, go and tell them like this. See, what is this guy? He's telling us, but we don't know our, how much we are suffering. Okay? But when you start something at small, 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 it will grow big. And you are dedicated to it and you follow it up, for sure it will make a difference in people's life. So, whatever stories, even in the last one, with all the respect to him, and he wants us to change the policies. Do we have the power to change the policies? No. So, we can waste our time. We are not politicians, even politicians, they don't change the policies. Let alone us. Okay? So, let's do all, the, all of those things with the early hanging fruits, the things that you can do. But only try to change your mindset by connecting things together. Seeing what is the problem, what are, what is the hidden opportunities from these assets that we have. So this is, I think, my comments on all these uh, videos. And I'd like to thank the guys who sent videos or audio, at least for a, a very quick competition it's only three days ago. And yeah, we were not expecting a lot, but they wanted to see how people react to such competitions and so on. OK, yes. Ali, please. You are now expert. Whatever you say is more important than me, even. Yes, yeah. he also uh, I was funny on faith, mm -hmm. like, the challenges I faced by following the story before I submitted the video. Mm -hmm. And I was also prepared a new, new video after my family story where I did before I submitted the video. Okay, okay. So, you know, I could have sent also, it's a good idea to have the, the audio sometimes, the audio I've seen, 
even though some, because I think these people also they had the same problem. Maybe they didn't have enough data. Okay. Yeah, I will just think uh, you didn't purchase presented system. You have it now? Yes, if you present it, it's very possible. Yes, <coughs> oh, go yes. No? Okay, you can stand here and come at the end. Yeah, thank you. Give me a close for Ali again. Okay, my maybe my my uh, it is about uh, give us can I give to go back? Yes, yes, please. What? First of all, uh, I would like to okay. I would like to take uh, the, the term I have said uh, very interesting things. In China, wonder we have a proverb that says uh, means that when the cow is going to take a feeding around, they start to cut the grass around the home. Means that as we have to develop our neighborhood in Yang, the university, before we go around, okay, we have to develop the people living near the, our university, near our, our CS uh, center. Before we go into Adam Sands, we have to develop our neighborhood now. So, in the last week, I was looking around in around the Roy. There is there is a mass need of eggs. Okay, as youth, I have seen as opportunity what we can apply so that we can save the our community the eggs. I have proposed a project that is give us egg shop. Yes. That's a project up the location, Chigali. Okay, so I uh, will have the upper next space you have X, X selling and delivery. We have a shop, we are selling the X and deliver to the people in the restaurant, or just where they need that X. Second, you have fast food. That's why I have said to give us fast food. That's the food. Eggs. We plan the people will come and eat the fast food cake when they have the going in the meeting very fast. We can take fast food. That's the cooked eggs. Also, we have uh, the problem to overcome. As the youth, how the challenge that you are going to solve in the community, we have unemployment. For the unemployment, we employ about two two percent. Two person to be the, our sellers in the shop, seller. We have also the people to deliver to to your youth for delivery. We will deliver our eggs to the shop, to other shop, to other restaurant. Okay. Also, we have to solve the problem or the challenge of small market to farmers. Can you explain this more? Yes. Small market. Yeah. Or low market. Low market. For the farmers, so farmers, especially who are in, uh, dealing with the poultry, poultry in the rural areas, due to uh, cultural belief that the people in the rural areas they don't consume eggs, eggs as the people from the, the city. So we can provide the market to those farmers who is living in the rural areas, where we can go to buy their eggs and come to deliver to the city. Okay, fed. We have a management. Uh, 
How much are they suffering by a shield of? That is caused by the lack of, lack of proteins. So we can solve this problem of flourishing. The opportunity as youth can come within this project is identifying opportunities. We have identifying problem. As I have mentioned, the uh, main problem as a youth, we identify the problem that we have to tackle in our community. Also, another opportunity is provide solution. Solution to that community issue. Also, after they have identified the problem, we suggest the solutions of creating diverse tech show. Okay. We have also problem development of development of community. Of community. As you have created this uh, egg shop, then so this diverse, diverse egg shop it will not be one place. It's <coughs> different place. Yes, uh, in the long run, we open the place in another place. We train the people to join us so that we can expand our project. So we have the development of community. Also, as you have said it, started by our neighborhood and our universities around our CS location. Also, open the blocks in different locations. So as um, as concluding. We also have expansion of a project in Long Land. We'll open the plants, we retain other youth to join us. Also, we giving egg to Manish students. As in Long Land, we try to donate a little eggs to the Manish children. Okay, and as conclusion, so as a youth, I think <coughs> we can join our efforts on all our that's applying our physical asset our skills as human capital and also natural as natural resources as the farmers as the farmers with the growers that <coughs> who is dealing with food farming they can supply to us the eggs. Thank you for the consideration. That's my okay. I want to tell you just the program that we can by the point in this um, Okay, so let's conclude with the uh, <coughs> poll and then we'll discuss uh, later. We'll sit down with you, some of you. And Sir, can I take the next slides before we go to the video? Right. Okay. Well, first of all, everyone, though, uh, I'm very happy to show your responses and your feedback, honestly. I'm very proud of you, though you were in one of the interns of our batch. So, if you're planning to install a project, okay, see, for See, you are getting an institution, you are getting an organization who is willing to install projects. It's about that how you are approaching. Okay. If you have any plans to install projects in the community or in the village, so let me briefly explain you about digging for projects. This is a village which we adopted in 2019. Show IIT. Okay. I already mentioned you. Let me go in very, very simple way. <coughs> so you can see this one. So this is made by local bamboos and you can saw straws. So it is a very sustainable hut and so uh, bamboo school. Okay. And it is also an example for sustainable tourism and for sustainable stuff. So we didn't use anything from any material stick or any plastic stuff. So you can see this one. These were the dropouts before. Okay. So in our villages, in our community, we can see many dropouts because of poverty. They couldn't have to continue their schools or they couldn't have to continue their business or any education stuff because of poverty. So because of poverty, they what they do, they migrate to some other places to get job and all, which I have already mentioned and explained about the migration problem. Okay. So if you want to start or if you want to install any social development projects in your respective villages, then you can teach us, you can approach us. Okay. So you can see this is the this is a real project. We already, we already, you know, we have already installed. They already dropped us before. Now they are making these punches from them. And bamboo is what we're talking about is about the minimal resources, which is abundantly available in your places. So you know better than me that what is available in your places from where you can start your projects and from where you can convert with your friends to entrepreneurs or to leaders. 
So you can see the entire setup of the bamboo industry. See how they used to do the treatment of bamboos, then from treating the bamboos. Okay, so one of the handling project of woman empowerment, which I already explained to you, right? Why woman empowerment is important, why you empowerment is important. So these are the real projects of IIT. It gets so this is a startup which Dr. Guit explained to you about. Okay, this is a part of the startup which we are selling the products, reverse copies. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see the products here. Okay, they are our customers who bought the products from us. You can see Mercedes. Okay, it's one of the um, you know about Mercedes, right? Yeah. So Mercedes from India, they bought us around. More than 45 pieces of this one. This is called an uh, ancient amphitheater okay, of India. So they like to buy this one to give people or to their delegates. Mercedes bought from us, then different people from you can see government officers bought the furnitures from us, and the celebrities of, from Assam and India they bought from us. And this is useful for officers, right? Yes. Yes. So, if you have any plans that you can work on, see, if you see, it's a very simple project, okay? All you need to do is make up your mind, okay? You don't need to worry about the project. You first make up your mind, you first clear your goals, what you want to do, and install the project. It's a very simple project. All you need, all you need to do, first do some research, okay? Go through your uh, the assets and minimal resources, and then we can work together. Maybe I think Ali is interested to start a project very soon, right? And it's your responsibility also. I think you know about what you will like being through all the assignments from the events of that. Okay, you can see that now they are the, all the artisans, they are all social entrepreneurs. They used to make these gifts from their houses, okay. They used to work in our industry now as a part time because they already passed up from the workshop and training. Now they are the part time artisans of our industry and also social entrepreneurs who used to make this this stuffs and sell us. And what we do, we as a reverse focus, which is a startup after IIT and also under CS, we sell the products and then after selling it, we are helping them to raise their profit margin by reverse focus. Show I. So see how inspiring this is from a small village, very remote village. You have no idea. It's maybe a doctor who has been to that village. It's a, it's almost like an African village. No electricity, no proper road transportation, nothing. But these people, they believed us, they trust us, they keep their faith on us, and we also keep faith on them, and we work together. Now, from starting from zero, from scratch, now we are here. You can see these are the picture. You can see those. This one, woman important project where we give them the workshop of silk and handloom from training them to bamboo. This is see, you can see this is one of the top show in India that we've been to. We we've been there. We gave lectures in the talk show. We share our projects. We share our experience. We share our journey. Okay, so keep it very simple. It's nothing a very hard work. Thank you. First of all, so if you really want to do projects, uh, do it. Okay, we are there to support you, guide you. We support you, finance CV, and uh, also the advices, the guidances. Okay, so let me go to uh, one of the video, which our team. Let me show you the team. This is team, our team. Okay, the Indian team of IIT. We recently recorded song, a theme song, and to promote the videos. We actually make a video. So let me show you the video. It's for the tourism. Okay. Yeah, becoming a eco village. Yeah, so say eco village. So from Bangkok, uh, the village, the whole village became like a tourist area. Those, those are all
So we do the news talk show. We had the discussion, and now they are very confident. They are entrepreneurs, so they can speak anything. They can speak very confidently. They can give lectures also. Okay. So now I'm concluding this, and uh, thanks for coming and uh, attending the workshop. And it's a very key and important moment that we youth really must to implement sustainable development projects to help us to help our community and to grow together and to sustain the community. So hopefully after the workshop we'll see that new people are coming with some projects and we'll be very happy and very grateful and very glad that we can tie up and we can collaborate and we can start a project. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, guys. And, uh... As I said, we need to sit down now with the guys who have uh, suggested the uh, projects to see how we can uh, uh, tell you what is the required to start a project. The set of requirements. So I think we we'll will meet in the library call uh, Isa, Khadija, or Abina, if you want to join. Or you want to prepare there that meeting room? Meeting room on the real. The boss said make you know. So we'll meet with Mohammed first and then Ali and then uh, we'll take the one from there. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, if you have any comments there, guys, from uh, Kenya or Uganda. And also, if you have a suggestion for a project, send it through Zoom or through WhatsApp to uh, uh, Herwa. And we'd <coughs> like to thank Herwa. Always she's uh, trying her best to bring you in. And one time we hope to see you here in Siyasi uh, Kigali. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay, let's go to there, Mohammed. To the library or no, this one? We take it to this one. Yeah. This one? Just bring water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make sure you I, I take photo when you drink it. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, can send maybe your projects or anything via WhatsApp or our email. Okay, bye. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Absent, can you see it? <laughs>